the splendid word incarnadine, for example. Who can use that without remembering multitudinous seas? Indeed, it is not a word until it is part of a sentence. Words, English words, are full of echoes, memories, associations. They've been out and about on people's lips, in their houses, in the streets, in the fields, for so many centuries. And that is one of the chief difficulties in writing them today. They're stored with other meanings, with other memories, and they have contracted so many famous marriages in the past. In the old days, of course, when English was a new language, writers could invent new words and use them. Nowadays, it's easy enough to invent new words. They spring to the lips whenever we see a new sight or feel a new sensation. But we cannot use them because the English language is a... You cannot use a brand new word in an old language because of the very obvious, yet always mysterious fact that a word is not a single and separate entity, it is part of other words. In order to use new words properly, you would have to invent a whole new language, and that, though no doubt we shall come to it, is not at the moment our business. Our business is to see what we can do with the old English language as it is. How can we combine the old words in new orders, so that they survive, so that they create beauty, so that they tell the truth. That is the question. And the person who could answer that question would deserve whatever crown of glory the world has to offer. 